where a lower value of velocity increases the position a lot quicker. Because every game loop, you're updating the position by, let's say, 20. So game loop 1, let's say position is 0, 0, and you have velocity as 20. The position will now be 20, 0. Then we update again, which will be 40, 0. Then we update again, which will be 60, 0. Now if we do it this way, it's going to be a lot slower. Because our velocity is 20, when only... 0.16666 seconds have passed. So it needs to update 60 times to achieve the same result. You can get around this by adding a simple method and it'll be a float. And let's call it ooh, speed from loop time. You can name it something better. And then accept your float speed and returns return speed times 60. And you can even, if your game is a lot complicated, you can actually do some logic to determine the exact frames per second it's running at instead of using this a constant 60. And again, name it something more useful. Now, since we're normalizing it, we need to do that after, which we're simply multiplying the velocity by 10. So now we need to do the same thing, but speed from loop time 10. Now we will achieve the same result because that's multiplied by 60, and the speed will be almost exactly. And again, if your game time slows down, it'll only update a small amount. And if it speeds up, it'll update a little bit more amount than before. So that's one good reason for the time. And acceleration is the same thing. Just update velocity plus equals vector 2 dot multiply with acceleration and with the same time. So before I add all the diagrams, this will probably be way more complicated than it's supposed to be, so if it is, don't worry, I'll add the diagrams and you can try again later, see if it's a little bit better. And this just simply multiplies a time you want, a scale value you want, times 60, and it will give you the same result as it would if you just did vol position plus equals velocity. So that's a correction method. That's to speed up with the time component to get the same result as if we just removed the time component. And again, if your game is a lot of code and a lot of intensive work on the computer or Xbox, change this and add some logic to actually determine the correct frames per second for this current frame and then it will return the correct result. So that's it for this tutorial. The diagrams will be added in a few days and it will help you a lot more with the formulas and the physics talk I have mentioned in the beginning. The time component can also be used to slow down or even reverse time, as you will see in my uh, little sample I provided earlier back. And the reverse time is the most basic way to do it. It'll just reverse the object's position and velocity. And it's not the perfect way to do it because it will not take account for the object's status which means if an object dies and then you reverse time right away it'll say it'll stay dead i'll have a more complicated way to reverse time in a few tutorials later on which will actually take into account of the object's status and everything else so let's look at this slowing down because i don't want to cover reverse time right now 0 0.5 so we can add a combination of 
the time and the slow down, which you just added to the dot multiply. You, dot, you multiply the total seconds times time, and it'll be slower. Oh, 0.5x. It'll be slower than it was before. You can make it 0.1. And then you can also add the ability to where you press the button and this will happen. Zero. That's stop time. You press the button, every object but your player will have stop time, which means the time will be zero. And then that'll last for a few seconds, and time will go back to one, and the object will go back to moving around like it should. So you can add that kind of ability to your game. And there's a lot of cool things you can do with this. Just play around with it. And if you do add acceleration to this sample, you need to add it here. So add a bracket. Otherwise you will get some weird motion that the object has. And do the same thing with velocity like acceleration dot x times equals maybe one. And do the same thing with all these. And then you'll achieve a nice result with that acceleration. So, hope this wasn't too bad without the diagrams, so I'll add those later on. And, next tutorial, we will cover the screen manager files. I provided a nice zip file that has a basic screen manager and basic game screen class. And then you make your own screens that are derived from the game screen class. So I'll show you how to add that to your game. And then the tutorial after that will add an intro screen, which is a nice fading effect where you can add your logo or some message before your game starts. So, hope to see you next time.